Hi guys, it's Dorman over here, and welcome to another Bionicle 2015 set review. <laughs> Hi guys, Dorman over here, back with another Bionicle 2015 set review. This time, we're going over set number 70795, Mask Maker vs Skull Grinder. This set was released in late 2015, cost approximately 40 Australian dollars, and had approximately 171 pieces. Well, what a set! So, before we get into the set, let's get the most boring part of any set review out of the way, the box. It's a box. Nice big square one, typical of large sets. Picture on front, uh, picture on the back, comic, um, stuff on the bottom, don't eat pieces, don't have enough alpha. One to one thing of the mask, is it the right size? Yeah, about right. And that's that, get that out of the way. So let me uh, just pop this one here, back on its stand, and back into the middle. So, uh, yeah. This, this contains sort of two main characters, per se. Those characters being Mask Maker, Ekimu, and Skull Grinder, or Colter. So, um, I'll break this down into two different uh, review parts. We'll take a look at Mask Maker, and we'll take a look at Skull Grinder. So, <clears throat> let's actually start with Skull Grinder. Get uh, this one out of the way, and this one, and pull him to the front. So, isn't he imposing? Well, well, well. Push him back a little bit. First things first, he's big. He's, he's big, and he's thin, and wide, and very skeletal. He pulls off the look quite well, so, yeah, a bit all over the place. Alright, so, uh, with any review, I'll go over the pros and the cons. Um, let's start with the pros. So let's jump right into it. He's got a consistent colour scheme. Consists of grey, silver, tr this trans orange colour, and black. And that's uh, his entire build, pretty much. With, I think, the oh yeah, and of course, gunmetal um, here, 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 here on the chest plate. See, it looks pretty good. Um, it, it's consistent, it follows that uh, quite well. It does pretty good. Another pro would be all the new parts he has. New sword piece, new armor add-on, new bone pieces, four of them. New axe piece as well, uh, new mask, new torso piece, and I think that's about it for new parts. Recolors, it's also got a whole load of trans orange shells, and I'm pretty sure we haven't seen those before, although we may have. Uh, in fact, we have, we've seen them in the Protector of Fire, or Namoto as is now called. So yeah, so another pro would be his gear function, or his functions, which he has two of, one of which being the gear function. This yellow gear back here, you turn it, and his arms will swing. Yay, whack stuff. Um, and his other function being the mask launching function, which we've seen in all of the sets. This um, tab back here is pressed down, and the mask flies off like that. Um, also, due to his construction, this can also be achieved by knocking his horns up, his mask flies off again. Um, another pro would be his mask. I mean, oh, I'll keep knocking it off. Here we go. Let's see, see how this works out. It, uh, oh, dropped it and everything. Looks quite good. It's like a, a skull mask. Yeah, it looks quite good. It's personally, I, I consider it to be the best mask of this wave. Uh, best skull mask of this wave. 
his build's also rather interesting. He's got a gearbox with some differing parts in here. But other than that, it's a fairly standard build, really. Like, he'd not really much, uh, much else to it. Yeah, so that just about sums it up for the pros. So, as with any, any set, there are cons. And we'll move into those straight away. First up is the, the big one. This weapon is huge and massive and really, really heavy. So as you can see, <clears throat> um, when I move the gear function, it tends to swing down a fair bit and try and stay there. Also, due to this being the heaviest part in the model, um, his arm will always swing down. There, you can't pose him striking. Um, he'll swing down quite like that. You know, <clears throat> he's reaching out to do a sweeping strike across the face. Nope. He wants to swing down again. So, he tends to have to pose it with it touching the ground, or just try and find a pose with, um, with which it balances with gravity fairly well. I mean, it leads to some alright poses, similar to one, the one on the box. However, you know, it does make posing an issue. Um, his other main con would be his gappiness, especially in the torso. As you can see here, this huge gap right through here and right under here. It just seemed rather unnecessary. Um, this yellow gear is quite obnoxious and breaks colour scheme. As does this blue pin. Oh, I do believe it's the only blue pin on the entire set. We almost escaped it. The only other colour scheme break would be this little red spike down here. It's just in martyr red. And since there's no other martyr red on him, it doesn't really fit. And that pretty much sums it up for Skull Grinder. He's actually pretty good as far as a set goes. So, move him off to the side and get to the Mask Maker himself, Akimu. And now, Akimu is probably the star of this set, being the big uh, Mata Nui figure for this wave, or as much as we've seen. And uh, he's, he's small. He's the size of a standard protector. In fact, he's slightly shorter. Let's just... I'll just quickly grab uh, Skull Grinder back for a size comparison. There we go. And I'd, I'd, I'd play Skull Grinder at round about Tahu height, if you have Tahu shoulder pads up. Um, so, you know, moving back from the side. Akima was quite small. Um... But, nonetheless, he's quite well built. Um, so, jumping right into the pros for Akimu. Uh, he, this build. He is the solid build. He's a gearbox. And some interesting stuff in here. And it, it makes it quite an interesting build. Um, as complex as, as we've seen so far for a protector-sized figure. And that's pretty cool. He's also got a consistent colour scheme, which is great to see. Consisting mainly of gold, trans light blue grey, silver, and black. Although only uh, black in sort of accents here and there. Another pro would be his functions, of which uh, he has three. That's right, three functions in a protector-sized figure. Even the Skull Grinder only had two. That's pretty crazy. The first of this function, as you would have guessed, is the mask launching function. Once again, you just tap the back of it here and off it pops. Pretty straightforward, really. The other function uh, would be... Actually, he has four functions. I'm, I'm sorry, I've missed that. He has four. Four. He has a spinning saw blade thing here. Uh, it's another one. It's a great play feature for the kids. And in addition to that, he has a stud launcher. Integrated into his hammer. Which, while a bit of a controversial choice, it's, it's alright. This bit here twists. And the front of the hammer fires, rather like this. And um, luckily LEGO gives you a whole bunch of studs, because you will lose some. In fact, I can only find four at the moment, from that firing right there. Yeah. It's only the four. The others have gone. That's in my studio, which is fairly enclosed and hard to lose parts in. So that's the other one. And his fourth and final feature is his gear function, which, once again, this yellow gear back here, turn it, and he whacks the hammer. Just that arm, 
the shield arm does not move, which is a good thing, I reckon. Or in my opinion, I think it's a good thing. Um, now, he, he's a lot of friction in that. More than Coulter does, actually. And yes, he's got a big hammer, but I think Coulter could have uh, benefited from a couple of these, maybe even which one of these parts extra added to his arm, rather than being in the Kimus. Oh well, that's the way it is. So that's that. That uh, about sums it up for the pros for Akimu. They're uh, fairly good pros, very, very solid, nothing to complain about. Now, as with any set, there are cons, and this particular figure does have a few, and let's get right into those. Firstly, red pins here, and blue pin in here, neither of which are part of the colour scheme. Um, another con would possibly be that this shield piece does turn a fair bit and quite easily. It can get rather annoying when you try to have him in a pose, and it sort of keeps lazily spinning around. It's rather annoying, that is. Another con, in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, is that this blaster in the hammer, it makes no sense. In my opinion, a hammer is a hammer. You hit something with it. You don't, not really shooting with it, and it, it just doesn't seem like a very practical weapon to have. Uh, another con, this yellow gear, once again, breaking the colour scheme. Um, and now another one, which is quite a nitpick, is that his colour scheme differs a fair bit from the animations. In the animations, his legs are pretty much black bones, and so are his arms. Um, and in this set, however, there's mostly trans blue which while as a parts pack that's great it does differ from the animations and in my opinion that makes it a con um, well that pretty much sums it up for a Kimu as well so let's move him out of the way as well and now to the third and final part of this set the mask of creation and its little stand first things first little stand it's a little stand the mask sits on it it's it, it's yeah it works, that's what it is. The mask, creation, it just uh, clips onto there and sits there. Now, it does not stay up on its own, and that's because there is not enough friction. You actually need to move these parts out a little bit, as you can see here, and this generates enough friction for the mask to be held up securely and straightforwardly like that until it flops down again eventually because the mask does exert slight pressure on it. There's definitely a con. The pro is that it's there. The con is it doesn't hold the mask very well. Now, off with that and onto the mask itself. This is a beautiful mask. It's a beautiful piece. Very detailed, as you can see there. All that writing on all the different parts of it. Um, inside looks pretty good. They've even used uh, the mold, mold seal there. They have put it in a place that makes it look like it could even be intended to be there. So that, that's well done. And just for looks, let's get a Kimu in here and place the mask on a Kimu. Of course, who owns the mask itself? The Mask of Creation. Pretty m <clears throat> one of the, I think, three legendary masks in the original line. We never actually got a Mask of Creation. Uh, so this is really great to get. It definitely suits it and could definitely blend right in alongside the previous line of legendary masks, being the Vahi time and the Ignika life. So, it looks good on the Kimu. Um, profile still suits, it looks alright from the front, however, with the clean CCBS aesthetic, it, the detail in it does seem a little bit out of place. Just a little. But, you know, a nitpick, it looks fairly good. So, let's go back into the overview once more. And I'll put Kimu's protector mask on here, just cause. So that's uh, that's the set. Ooh, I think I forgot to mention this earlier. So let me just switch these masks back once more. I'm not really sure if this counts as a function or not, whether it was intended. But uh, Coulter's staff, due to the way in which it's constructed, has a little bit of flex in these. Um, axe parts, which means he can actually attempt to grab the Mask of Creation. So he can 
push these on here, and they push around it, and grab the mask. Which is kind of cool, and I kind of think it's intentional. However, it is technically like an illegal move, per se. Um, but it's pretty cool. And I mean, you can always uh, pose the mask being on there somewhat like that. Um, and that pretty much matches how it seems in most of the box art and that sort of thing. So let's leave it like that, shall we? That looks pretty good. So that there is Mask Maker vs. Skull Grinder. Quite a nice little set in my opinion. It's not too expensive in terms of as sets go, however it is the most expensive of this line. Um, so I would recommend, if you did get any set of this line that I've gone over so far, which is most of them, even this is my first review, I would recommend this one. This is, uh, you know, it's a really great set. You get two really great figures with uh, not many cons. Um, you get a great mask, which is the centerpiece for this line. Uh, you get a whole bunch of new pieces. You get the uh, badge for this one. 